The first national park in Canada was created in 1885 in the north of the country. It was based around hot water springs hidden among amazing landscapes. That minute park of only 26 square kilometers was the embryo of one of the largest national parks in the world. Its role was to conserve the flora and fauna of the American boreal forests, and in particular the wood buffalo, a largely unknown subspecies which provided both the name and the raison d'etre for this new nature reserve. The Wood Buffalo National Park covers an area of 44,900 square kilometers, almost one and a half times the size of Belgium. It provides an unspoiled example of the landscape that predominates in Canada, the boreal forest, which goes from Alaska to Newfoundland and accounts for almost 80% of the forested area of Canada. Spruces, firs, birches and larches provide shelter for a wide variety of animals which have adapted to the hardships of this northerly climate. It is dry and cold for most of the year with winter temperatures of 40 degrees below zero. There is more variety in the conifer forests and the river plains where there are more than 250 plant species. In wood buffalo, there are 47 species of mammals, most of which are typical of the boreal forest and a much larger number of birds. This number is increased by seasonal migrations. The low annual rainfall makes the role of the waterways very important. The River Pierce and the River Athabasca provide water for the park and form an inland delta where the fauna gather. Sprinkled around the forests of wood buffalo, there are also many smaller waterways and peaceful lakes which flood each year. At the beginning of spring, the golden eyes come on heat. The male, which is more brightly and dramatically colored than the female, puts all his efforts into these strange movements inherent in the courting process so as to attract a female to mate with. But there is more than one suitor in the lake. Another male appears and the local golden eye is not prepared to allow such an intrusion onto its territory so it leaves its courting for a moment to get rid of its rival.
Once the intruder has been chased away, the male starts its courting again. It has demonstrated its superiority, and the satisfied female is at last receptive to his advances. Wood Buffalo has one of the largest regions of karstic formations. Water carves the landscape, forming tunnels and caverns where the rivers run underground or closed basins and sunken valleys where they run on the surface. The large rivers in this area dig away at the rock and jump over spectacular waterfalls before flowing into big lakes such as the Athabasca or the Great Slave, which border on the park. The watercourses are very rough in the spring because they are filled with water from the thaw of the snow and ice, and the water level is multiplied in just a few days. Even so, under these turbulent waters there are schools of fish which attract white pelicans, the best fishermen in wood buffalo. There are only two types of pelicans in the American continent. The brown pelican, which lives in the sea, and this one, the white pelican, which moves between marine and freshwater habitats according to the season. The white pelican spends the winter in warmer southern climes, such as the coasts of Florida, the Gulf of Mexico, and Southern California. In the summer, it moves to its breeding areas in lakes in the center of Canada and to some places in the Rocky Mountains. Its most northerly nesting area is in the rapids of the River Slave. The physical appearance of the white pelican changes noticeably at this time, during the process of courting and egg-laying. The adults display a streak of feathers in the form of a crest and triangular fibrous growths appear on the upper part of the bill which fall off after the eggs are laid and would seem to have a defensive function. It has been observed that during mating season fighting, the birds attack these protuberances with their bills instead of attacking other more vulnerable or more dangerous areas. These pelicans fishing techniques are different from that used by their cousins, the brown pelicans. While the latter use biting movements to capture their prey, the white pelicans work together, surrounding groups of fish, and then all at the same time put their heads under the water and capture them with their pouches in a beautiful type of aquatic ballet. Europeans described the white pelicans in their chronicles, they must have seen them during the mating season before the egg-laying period. Confused by the voluminous growths on their bills, they described them as pelicans with teeth. In this way, the American white pelican became part of the zoological mythology of the Renaissance Europe until more observant ornithologists corrected the mistake. The pelicans are not the only ones to catch fish in wood buffalo. The local Indians are licensed to hunt and fish within the protected area except for the endangered species. <coughs> the original inhabitants of this area are the Dean Indians. 
The Cree settled here in the lower part of the River Peace relatively recently. Their descendants still exploit the natural resources here using traditional methods. The warm season passes very quickly and they need to stock up food for the incredibly long northern winter when the rivers freeze over and hunting becomes almost impossible. They cook what they catch in the open air or inside traditional Indian tents where wild animals attracted by the smell cannot steal the food. Smoking is the best method of conservation for the fish and the meat. Once smoked, the dry steaks are stored until the arrival of the snow and the winter cold. Until that time, fresh food can be eaten. This is the fishing season in the national park. In the northeastern edge of the park, near the River Slave, there is a plain of 250 square kilometers, which is covered by salt. A prehistoric ocean covered this area 400 million years ago. When this dried up, the salt was deposited in the soil and the springs that irrigate the plains brought it up to the surface. The water evaporates on the outside and the salt is left behind to cover the plains like a blanket of snow. From time immemorial, the salt flats were used by natives and later by European traders. Today, only the animals in the park approach its white crust in search of salts. The origin of the National Park, as its name suggests, is due principally to the wood buffalo. There is a population of around 6,000 wood buffaloes, the largest herd of these animals that exists in the wild in the world. The buffalo originated in Eurasia, where it was hunted by Paleolithic man. In prehistoric times, during the last advance of the glaciers, this buffalo, which is now extinct, crossed from the north of Siberia to Alaska on the ice which covered the Bering Straits. With the retreat of the glaciers, the buffalo spread to the east of the Rocky Mountains and went down from the Great Plains of the north to Mexico. Some buffaloes, however, stayed in the shelter of the boreal forests and, as a result of living in different habitats, two distinct subspecies developed, those from the plains the buffaloes we all know from the Wild West stories, and these ones from the forest, fewer in number and less well known. The decline of the wood buffalo was not due to hunting, as was the case of its relative from the plains. For some unknown reason, it was at the point of extinction at the beginning of the century. And to try to prevent this, the Wood Buffalo National Park was created in 1922. Then it sheltered a population of 1,500 buffaloes. The government had settled a group of plains buffaloes, the other subspecies, in the Elk Island National Park near Wood Buffalo. There, the buffalo population multiplied in a few years and outgrew the limits of the population that the park could sustain, with the result that 6,673 of them were transferred to Wood Buffalo between 1925 and 1928 with disastrous consequences. The plains buffaloes from this area infected the wood buffaloes with bovine brucellosis and tuberculosis. In addition, the two subspecies of buffaloes started crossbreeding until the pure-blooded wood buffalo seemed to have been lost. By the middle of the century, the loss of the wood buffalo subspecies was taken for granted, and the worst thing was that those in charge of wildlife protection and conservation had been responsible for it. Fortunately, a small herd of wood buffaloes which had not come into contact with the plains buffaloes was discovered in a remote corner of the park in 1958. 
Immediately, measures were taken to avoid crossbreeding and the animals were sent to different reserves so as to minimize risks. This small group had saved the wood buffalo from extinction. Since 1970, the wood buffalo population in Wood Buffalo Park seems to have gone down gradually, while in other nearby areas like the Mackenzie Buffalo Reserve or the Elk Island National Park, it has increased considerably. Even so, the largest group is still here in Wood Buffalo. Within the park, wolves are the buffalo's only predators, and it is thanks to them that there is a healthy buffalo population. However, the movement of large herds affects an infinite number of lesser species which share the plains with them. The presence of the buffaloes poses a serious problem for these killdeers. The killdeers make their nests in the ground and their eggs are perfectly camouflaged so as to prevent the crows and foxes from eating them. When the parents detect the presence of a potential enemy, they leave the nesting area noisily and pretend to have a broken wing so that if it is a carnivore that is approaching, it will think it has a defenseless bird at its mercy and will start to chase it. In doing so, the intruder moves away from the nest and the eggs. But the trick does not work with the buffaloes. To the buffaloes, the killdeers must seem like noisy, desperate birds, which they do not have the slightest intention of chasing. The eggs have been exposed for too long and the female returns to warm them under the indifferent gaze of the buffalo. Except for an unfortunate foot in the wrong place, the nests will be safe. But the nerva does not trust any of them. Once she has warmed her eggs, she returns to her strategy of distraction. The arrival of spring is a time of changes in wood buffalo. The fields turn green and the migrating birds, such as these whooping cranes, return here to breed and stay until the return of the cold weather. The buffaloes also reflect the change of season. Their thick, closed coat, which has helped them get through the extremely severe winter of the northern forest, falls off, giving way to much shorter, fresher fur. The changes of coat is common to both subspecies of American buffalo, but there are significant differences between them, not only physiological, but also in terms of behavior. The plains buffaloes on this occasion are heard from Montana, migrate seasonally from north to south, while the forest buffaloes only move locally over short distances. In addition, the plains buffaloes move in giant herds, while those from the forest move in small groups. There are conspicuous physiological differences. Over time, the plains buffalo has become smaller and paler than its relative from the forest. Its hump has become lower and more rounded, and the distribution and quantity of fur in the lower part of the body has increased.
In spite of so many differences, it is still difficult to distinguish between them for those who are not used to doing so, as the two subspecies are never together which makes direct comparisons impossible. The identification of each subspecies is only reached easily by observing their distribution. However, if the buffaloes of the eastern United States, like those in Yellowstone National Park, can be identified as plains buffaloes, the case of the Canadian buffaloes is complicated by the hybrids produced by the crossbreeding between the two subspecies. By comparing the skeletons of buffaloes like this one, the plains buffalo, with skeletons of these ones, the wood buffaloes, and with fossilized skeletons of the primitive buffaloes that crossed the Bering Straits from Siberia, scientists have proved that in many aspects the wood buffalo is an intermediate step between the now extinct prehistoric species and the plains buffalo. After a period of eight to nine months, around about the month of May, the young are born. The genetic bottleneck that the wood buffalo population had to go through when the subspecies was at the point of disappearing has reduced its genetic viability. Even so, the straw-colored calves become strong soon after coming into the world. Half an hour after being born, the calf starts to suckle. After a few hours, it can walk steadily, and in a few days, it can follow its mother to rejoin the herd. Wood Buffalo National Park is situated in a remote area of Alberta and the Northwest Territories where access is difficult. Few visitors manage to penetrate its gigantic frontiers to marvel at the wild natural life inside. And the Wood Buffalo, a relic of times gone by, is still completely unknown to most of them. <laughs> 